Welcome back to Honest News. I'd like to share something with you, brothers and sisters, that I think that really uh, stumps God's people. I think I think this is a real hindrance. Um, that this is a real hindrance to God's people. Um, we're going to begin with Luke chapter twelve and verse twenty-three. Luke chapter twelve, verse twenty. It says, now, by the way, this is Jesus. Jesus is saying these words. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are you better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then, being not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you, that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye, of little faith. And seek not ye what you shall eat or what you shall drink, neither be ye of a doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your father knoweth that you have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and these things shall be added unto you. In another place he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Reading again, Luke chapter 12, verse 25. And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, for your holy word. We thank you for truth. We thank you, God, for the wisdom that we receive from the Scriptures. We thank you, God, for the faith that we receive through the hearing of your Word, through the understanding of your Word. We pray, Lord, you'll quicken this Word, watch over this Word, hasten this Word, to perform this Word in the heart of your people. You said in your word, Lord, you're going to do a quick work in righteousness. We pray, Lord, that you will quicken this word to your people's hearts. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ as we minister your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And which of you, 
with taking thought can add to his stature one cubit. If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Why is it that God's people spend all their time worrying about what they cannot change? and spend very little, if no time, on the things they can change. Why? Because God tells us in his word that the devil goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Are you listening, folks? First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking. Who's he seeking? Whom he may devour. How does the devil devour? Through fear, through worry. Are you listening? Jesus says, if you can't change something, If you have no control over something, he said, then why are you worrying about it? Why is it that God's people worry themselves, busy themselves? Uh, One of the greatest revelations I ever received from the Lord. One day God said to me, the Holy Ghost said to me, mind your own business. (laughs) one of the greatest revelations I ever received. Because when he said it, he didn't say it with condemnation. He didn't say it in a condescending way. You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And when he said that, I understood what he was saying. You got enough to be concerned with. You don't need to be concerning yourself with that which is not your concern. Amen? Amen? A lot of times, God, God's people bring things up in, upon their lives that they don't need to be concerning themselves with. But I'd like us to think about something here. How many times in your own life have you worried about something that you could not ever change? Jesus is speaking about something here that you and I have no control over. You and I can't add to our stature. Amen? If a person's short, they can't make themselves tall. If a person's tall, they can't make themselves short. Yeah, of course, they could cut their legs off, or they could stand on stilts if they're short. But you know what I'm saying. Listen, people. By the way, that would be manipulation. But naturally... You can't add to your stature. Amen? Listen. Jesus says, if you can't do that, why do you worry about the rest? What he's saying is, why are you concerning yourself about things that you have no power over? You can't change these things. You and I, brothers and sisters, have situations, we have circumstances, we have things we're going through in our lives, and you and I have no control over it, especially 
what another person's doing. How many times God's people worry themselves about what someone else is doing? Amen. We see in Song of Solomon, she says, I've kept everybody else's vineyard, but my own vineyard I've not kept. Amen. How many times do we get caught up worrying ourselves, busying ourselves with the affairs of others and we're not taking care of our own experience in the Lord. The Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Nowhere does it say in the Bible we're supposed to work out our brother or sister's, amen, or our spouses or our, you know, we're not supposed to be working out other people's salvation. Who appointed you to work out somebody else's salvation? Amen. We are to commit them to the Lord. We are to lift them up to the Lord. Amen. We are to pray for them. Ask God to work in their lives. But if you can't change that thing in your own life that they're dealing with, well, how in the world do you expect you're going to help them? Amen. There's a lot of wisdom in what I'm sharing with you. God's people would rest in the Lord so much more easier if they would understand this principle. They could understand this truth. How much time do you spend in a day concerning yourself with that which you have no power over? You have no control over. You can't change it. You can't make a change in that situation, but you worry about it. Amen. You fret and you worry. That's the devil's business, people, getting you and I concerned and worried about that which we cannot change. Amen. Worrying is probably the number one way that Satan devours. Worrying. Amen? Worrying. Constantly worrying. If you look up the word worry in the original, or actually in a dictionary, you'll find that it's the picture of a dog that's got something in its mouth and it's ringing it. Yeah. You ever felt like you're in the mouth of a dog being wrung out? Amen. That dog is taking that thing and he's, he's shaking it off. You ever, does anybody else there out there have a dog? You have a pet or dog? Listen. You ever seen that dog? For hours, they, they'll shake that thing in their mouth. That's worry. That's what worry looks like. Amen. I didn't, I didn't know that, Brother Joseph. Is that what I look like? Yeah, inwardly. Amen? Worried. Troubled. That's, that's what Martha was experiencing. Troubled about many things. Amen? Now God's people are supposed to be resting in the Lord. Amen? Jesus said, consider the lilies, how they grow. They don't toil. They don't spin. Look how beautiful they are. Amen. Who clothed those lilies? The Lord. God. God clothed those lilies. And he says, I'm going to clothe you. You know, when you worry and you fret, a lot of times you don't clothe yourself very well, do you? Eh? Worried about everybody thinks. Amen. Being self-conscious. Listen to me. You should be more concerned about being clothed with the beauty of holiness than you're concerned about what you look like in the physical. Amen. Oh, Lord God Almighty. The beauty of holiness. Amen. It's not about the physical. 
It's not about the physical looks. We see in the scripture that God gave Leah children, but Rachel was barren. Amen? Leah was looked down upon. She was tender-eyed. She wasn't as beautiful as Rachel. But she had children. She was blessed of God with children. Amen. Listen to me, people. God doesn't look on the outward. He doesn't look on the outward appearance only. God looks beyond that. He, yeah, he sees the outward, but he looks deeper. Amen? He looks deeper. He starts with the outward. You know, you've seen this foolish Superman movies with x-ray vision, right? How many know God can see your heart? He sees beyond the physical. God looks on the heart. Hallelujah. Man, he can't see the heart. Man doesn't know what's in the heart. Amen. The scripture says the heart is desperately wicked. It's deceitful. Desperately wicked. Deceitful above all things. It is a deep Deep, the Bible says. But God searches it. God knows it. And if you're worried, and you're fretting, you, you got a, a lot bigger issue than just what you're wearing for clothes or what your hair looks like or what you look like for that matter. Amen? People go through life worrying, 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 and inwardly worrying. Always concerned what other people think. That's probably one of the greatest entrapments of the devil. That's one of the greatest ways that Satan hinders people from being even used by God. Amen? I heard about a a minister that uh, his pastor told him, he says, you'll never preach the gospel. You might as well get a job. Now, what pastor tells a young man that has a heart to preach, you'll never be a preacher. Amen. Now, sometimes God will allow that. He'll have a pastor do that. And not that the pastor's doing it to test him or to be... Uh, manipulative or whatever, but God will use a pastor in that way. And uh, he'll blind a pastor from seeing anything in an individual because God wants to, he wants that person that uh, desires to preach or whatever it is that they desire to do in the ministry. God doesn't want that individual going to the pastor to find out what he's supposed to be doing. You all remember the story of Samuel. Amen. God was calling Samuel, but where did Samuel go? He went running for Eli. How many young men, how many young people in this hour are running? Running. From this minister to that minister, trying to find out what they're supposed to be doing. Or looking for some kind of approval. Listen to me. The only approval you need is of God. If he approves, if he appoints, if he called you, if he prepared you, if he sent you, who cares what man thinks? Amen? Paul the Apostle said, I wasn't called by man. I wasn't sent by man. He said, I'm not a servant of man. I'm a servant of God. That's what makes a servant of God. That's what makes a man of God. A man of God does not look for the approval of men. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know who out there needs to hear this, but I'm not one of those ministers that tells you God doesn't need anybody else. He just needs me. My field 
roads are empty. Yeah. His house is full, though. Who's gonna work for me today? Seems all my children want to sit around my table. But who? Who? Gonna work in his fields. Who's gonna work in his fields? The laborers are few in this hour. Praise God, too many ministers out there holding back. Those that should be being prepared to go out and work in the fields. Amen. Push away from the table. Look out the window pane. Just beyond the house of plenty lies a field of golden grain. Amen. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. There's a world out there that needs Jesus. And if you're concerned what man thinks, you're concerned what you look like, listen, you're not going to do anything for God. John the Baptist came out of the wilderness. Amen. He was girt with leather and eating wild uh, locusts. Listen. If you were to look at John the Baptist or Elijah for that matter, because he was the same spirit as Elijah, you wouldn't have saw much. Amen. And it even says about Jesus. He said he had no physical form, no beautiful or comeliness that you would desire him. Amen. That's not just a man. Son of God, the Son of God, the Word became flesh. Amen. You want to stay tuned for working on a message going to be sharing with you. He stands behind our wall. Amen. He standeth behind our wall. Amen. Praise the Lord, people. The Lord's not holding you back. Amen. No. The Lord's not hindering you. The Lord may be, not be sending you out into a field to work, but he's not hindering you, holding you back from seeking him. Amen. Let me tell you this. A minister will only be as effective as his prayer life. You hear what I said? A minister will only be as effective as his prayer life. If you don't have a fervent prayer life, you're not going to have a fervent ministry. You won't be on fire for the Lord. It starts in your prayer life. Amen. It starts in the secret place. It starts in the closet. Amen. And that's where that minister I was telling you, his pastor said, you'll never be a preacher. You might as well go get yourself a job. No, he got in a closet and he stayed there until he was full of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Praise God, one of the most powerful ministers out there right now going across America. Praise the Lord, people. Powerful ministry. Glory to God. Don't look for the approval of man. Don't be concerned what people think. Don't worry about what you can't change. Concern yourself with what you can do. Amen? Concern yourself with what you can do. I will tell you this, when you concern yourself with things you can't do, you know what will happen? You'll be messing up everything you try. That's right. You'll be making a mess of everything in the physical and the natural. 
because you're trying to do it spiritually or you're trying to do it supernaturally. Oh, listen, people, only God can work miracles. Amen. Donald Trump trying to call his presidency a miracle. Did you hear him the other night calling himself a miracle? His presidency, his administration, what he has done, that's a miracle. Bill Gates calling uh, vaccines a miracle. Listen, only God can work a miracle. Devil can perform lying signs and wonders, but only God can perform a miracle. Hallelujah. Can you imagine sticking the word miracle on some mayonnaise? Huh? You talk about an abomination. Taking that word miracle and putting it on a mayonnaise jar. You talk about belittling and condescending the word of God. How many know only God can work a miracle? Stop trying to do what you can't do. Amen. God is not expecting you to do something he knows you can't do. But he is expecting you to do what you can do. Amen. He's expecting you to do what you can do. You're wasting your time trying to do what you can't do, that nobody can do except God. Amen? Praise the Lord, people. I think Jesus nailed it, don't you? When he said, which of you, with taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? I think he nailed it, people. If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? If you will take heed to this message, it'll change your life. Amen? You'll, you'll become like that lily. You'll learn how to grow in the kingdom. You won't be toiling. Amen? Praise the Lord. You won't be worrying, fretting about growing in the Lord. You'll find that you just will grow as you abide in Him. Praise the Lord. The rain of the Spirit will come, water, and the sunshine of the Holy Ghost, the Son of God, Rise with healing in his rays. Praise God will shine upon your life and restore and heal and cure and deliver. Amen. And you'll be like one of those lilies. Praise God. That's glorious. The shape of a trumpet. White. Gold. Green. Praise God. Consider the lilies. They don't toil nor spin. There's not with more splendor than them. Amen? I'll just do this part of it. I don't remember the words. And we have a heavenly Father above with eyes full of mercy and a heart full of love. He really cares when your head is bowed low. Consider the lilies. 
and then you will know. Praise the Lord. May I introduce you to this friend of mine. He hangs out the stars, tells the sun when to shine. He really cares when your head is bowed low. Consider the lilies, and then you will know. You look into the book of Song of Solomon. It says he's down in his garden gathering lilies. Amen? He's down in his garden feeding among the lilies. But then he's down in his garden gathering lilies. And that word gather means to pick. He's picking lilies that have learned to grow. How many know the Lord's about to pick some lilies? Oh, yes. Going to be caught up to God and to his throne. Bride of Christ. Going to pick. Going to pick them out of the garden of the Lord. Amen. Going to take them up into the Father's house. Present them. Hallelujah. Praise God, brothers and sisters. Have you learned the secret? Have you learned how to grow like the lily? Or are you still toiling? Are you still fretting? Are you still worrying? Or are you, have you learned how to abide in him? Just simply abide. Hallelujah. Get rooted and grounded in him and just abide in him and grow. Because you're rooted and grounded in Christ, in his love, hallelujah, and you're being nurtured. Praise the Lord. Glory to God, people. From this day forward, make up your mind. You're not going to worry any longer about what you can't change. Amen. No longer going to worry about that which you have no power over no control over, and you're going to, from this point on, mind your own business, let God take care of his business, amen, and you're going to rest in the Lord and be faithful to do what you can do. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise your name, Lord. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Casting all, not some, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Hallelujah. Not going to worry, not going to fret, amen. Not going to be devoured by the devil, praise God. Glory to God, people. Not going to be devoured by that devil. Not going to be devoured by the roaring of the devil. Amen. About time God's people roar back at the devil. Amen. With the roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. Let the Lord rebuke that devil. Amen. Through your lips, praise God. The Lord rebuke you, devil. Woo. Glory to God. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. My, 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 my. 
Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. It's time for God's people, amen, to stop cowering to the devil. Look what the scripture says. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. What are you supposed to do? Cower? Cower at the roar of the devil? Resist! Steadfast in the faith. Resist. Another place it says, submit yourself to God and resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. Amen? Praise the Lord, people. If God's people would learn to submit themselves to God and cast all their care upon the Lord, the devil wouldn't stand a chance. Amen? How many of you out there right now listening, you're worried about something? What is it you're worried about? Now think about this. Is it something you can change? Is it something that you actually have power over? If it's not, why? Like Jesus said, why do you care for that? Why are you worried about it? Think about what I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters. You're trying to do the impossible, and you can't do the impossible. You can't. that nothing's impossible to him. And nothing is impossible to him that believes. Because when you believe, he does it. It's not you doing it. He said, if we ask according to his will, he'll do it. That's the key right there. If we ask according to his will. Amen. Make sure it's his will. And he'll do it. He'll do it, people. It's his will. He'll do it. That's another thing God's people do. Always asking God to do something that's not even his will. Amen. Make sure it's his will. Praise the Lord, people. We've got to get to the place where we learn to mind our own business. Hallelujah. That's not to be condescending. That's the truth. One of the greatest revelations the Lord ever gave to me. Mind your own business, son. That's what he said to me. Yes, sir. Amen? Yes, sir. I'll tell you, it changed my life. I don't worry about other people. I don't worry about what others are doing. I don't. I see people, they're constantly worried about somebody else all the time. Always worried about somebody else. I don't know how you make it. I, don't, I do not know how you make it as a Martha. I don't know how you do it. You've got to be most miserable. You've got to be so miserable. But you don't have to be. Amen? You don't have to stay there casting all your care upon him. Will you do it? Will you cast all your care upon Jesus? He cares for you. He loves you. Amen. He doesn't want you to carry that burden alone. Amen. That's not his will, is that you carry that burden alone. He said, my burden is light. He wants you to allow him to yoke with you. You yoke with him, and you don't carry your own burdens you carry his burden, and his burden's light. And you know what he does when you carry the burden that he's given you to carry? What does he do? He carries your burden. Amen? When you care for the things God desires for you to care about, he takes care of the things you're worried about, things you care about. That's how it works in the kingdom Took me years to learn that, but it's the truth. 
I found that when I'm doing what God's called me to do, every, everything else falls into place. The Lord makes it all work. It's glorious, folks. You ought to try it. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. I thank God my, my fretting and my worrying days are over. I don't worry anymore. Amen. I've learned that. I don't worry. I don't fret. Praise the Lord. I commit it to Jesus. Commit it all to Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, people. Hallelujah. You get a chance. It's too bad I don't have a picture of it one right now. Yeah, I'll take a second and do that. Let me see if I can bring up a hallelujah. Just while this while we're in the spirit here and let me uh praise the Lord. Let me um let me bring up a picture of a lily. Let's just take a look at it together. Amen. While we're worshiping the Lord. Praise the Lord. Feel his presence right now. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise. Praise you, Jesus. I don't know how that happened. It's like the audio got turned off. I don't know how long it was turned off for. But if you stuck around, amen, you didn't get in a hurry, you didn't get anxious and worried, well, praise the Lord, you got opportunity to take a look here. Consider the lily, they don't toil nor spin, is more splendid. Hallelujah. There's, there's no one with more splendor than them. Even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these, Jesus said. I'm trying to find a specific lily. That's, that's, that's gorgeous right there, right? That's beautiful. Hallelujah. I was looking for the trumpet ones, ones that look like trumpets. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See if I can find one. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Let me see here. Praise you, Jesus. Is that it? Still not the one I'm thinking of, though. Look at that gold in the center there. You see that gold? That's a uh, type of the divine nature, golden divine nature, and then the green is eternal life, and then the white is the purity. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
My, 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 my. Thank you, Jesus. I've seen some lilies that actually look like trumpets. Let's see here. Let's see. But there's so many different lilies. So many. This is the one I'm looking for right here. Let's see if I can move this over. Take a look at this, folks. Consider the lilies, how they grow. Huh? Consider the lilies, how they grow. My Lord and my God. Look at that. Is that not stunning? Hallelujah, Jesus. Look at that. Look at that, folks. Consider the lilies. Consider the lilies. How they grow. They don't toil. They don't spin. Oh, I tell you. Lord Jesus is telling us a lot, isn't he? Look at the beauty of that. Look at that. There is no clothing in the world. There is no king. This is the what I was looking for, the trumpet. See the trumpet? In the shape of a trumpet. Hallelujah. Praise God, people. Praise your name, Jesus. Hmm. Hallelujah. That's that's gorgeous. Look at that. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. I just want to zoom in on that more if I can. Hallelujah. Really want I really want us to look at these colors. Look at that. Look at that, folks. Look at that. Hallelujah. And we have a heavenly Father above. Eyes full of mercy and a heart filled with love. He really cares when your head is out low. Consider the lilies, and then you will know. May I introduce you to this friend of mine. Hangs out the stars, tells the sun when to shine. And he really cares when your head is out low. Consider the lilies, and then you will know. <laughs> hallelujah 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 thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah lord hallelujah 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 thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah oh what a mighty god we serve folks what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. 
What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. How'd you like to be arrayed like one of these? How'd you... Do you, do you realize in the kingdom, folks, we're going to be arrayed with more splendor and more glory than this? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Paul said, I'm not even going to compare what I've gone through in this life. It's not worthy to be compared with the glory that's going to be revealed in me. Hallelujah. If God so clothed, amen, the flowers of the field that are here in the field today and gone tomorrow, amen, how much more is the Lord going to take care of you? O oh, ye of little faith. Hmm? Ah? Uh, praise God, people. Woo! Hallelujah. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. Listen, he's more than just a story. He is the king of glory. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. Are you glad? Are you glad he's more than just a story, brothers and sisters? Amen. He's the king of glory. Hallelujah. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither is it entered into the heart of man what God, what God has prepared for those who love him. Amen. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Look at the beauty, people. Look at that beauty. Can you just see the delicateness of our Heavenly Father? Can you see the intricateness? Can you see that God is concerned about every single little, minute, complete, smallest little detail? And he cares more about you than he does about the flowers in the field. If God so clothed the fields, huh? is he going to take care of you? Better than you can take care of yourself. I guarantee you that. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, brothers and sisters. Look at these. Look at these beautiful colors. Ah, look at these beautiful colors. Man cannot even begin. No wonder the Lord wanted these at the top of the pillars in the temple. At the top. Amen. In Solomon's kingdom, they were at the top of the pillars. Praise the Lord, people. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lamb of God forevermore. Isn't it interesting? The world's getting ready to getting ready to uh, celebrate their pagan holiday. They're going to have these. They'll have lilies and they'll be, they'll be carrying on in their traditions of man, gathering together in their <laughs> what do you know, <laughs> graveyards, I guess you could call them. Amen. Where the dead gather. Amen. And there'll be no 
life there. There'll be no beauty. There'll be no holiness. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to say this again. If God put this much detail into a flower that's here today and gone tomorrow, how much more does he care for you? the most intricate of details. Every single little detail. You say, well, God doesn't seem to care about me in every single little detail. Have you prayed about every little detail? Have you brought every little detail to his attention in prayer? Amen. Praise the Lord, people. Glory to God. Well, Father, I really need this thing. Do you? <laughs> Do you really need it? Hallelujah. Just like a dad will sit down his son, try to get him to understand, you don't need that. You just think you need that. <laughs> I remember one time I was going to buy a one of those, uh, what do they call that? A zero cut, whatever. One of those lawnmowers you have a big area to cut you know they I think they call it a zero cut where you can actually go in a circle there and I said father I gotta have one of those he says you don't know the first thing about it have you learned about it you know <laughs> oh, I gotta go get one can you provide me one he see he could have provided it no problem but what I have known how to use it, what I have known, he, see, what he was saying to me is, I want you to learn about it first, right? I want you to learn and know what it is. I want you to know how to, what, you know, how, how to drive it and how to take care of it. Yeah, that's how he put it to me. God's people don't think God's like that, but he is. He's concerned about the most intricate, the smallest little details. Amen. And we wonder, doesn't God care? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not, the problem's not on his end. It's really us that doesn't care. That's really what it comes down to. We don't care enough to involve him in our plans, right? Hmm? We're so concerned about God wanting God to do what we want him to do. We could care less what he wants to do. It's the truth, people. It is the truth. If God's people would get concerned about what God is up to, oh, things would turn around. Things would turn around. If God's people would seek him to desire what God is doing. Lord, what are you doing today? Amen. Hallelujah. Do you wake up in the morning and say, God, what, what, what are you doing today? Lord, where are you? What, what, where are you working today? Lord, amen. Is your first thoughts in your mind, Lord, what are you doing today? What are we doing today, Lord? Where are we going today? Where are we going to be working today, Jesus? Or do you just go through the motions? You have a form of godliness. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You have not because you ask not. God bless you.